and we're back on another episode of Studio Time. And in this episode, we're going to do something similar that we did on the last episode, which is technically playing a cue and really dissecting it section by section where the theme comes from. Uh, so, like I said, this is a very thematic score, uh, and um, I wanted to point that out that how these themes are being used. And I think it's a it's a um, um, it's an exercise uh, well doing. I remember when um, uh, I worked with Hans intensely for two, three years uh, when I was out at Remote Control, that this was the, the part where I learned a lot from Hans, like what to, you, what to play and where to play it and how to connect the things uh, together. So uh, I thank Hans um, still every day uh, for the wonderful knowledge that he's giving me and now i'd like to share that knowledge with you guys out there uh, whether it's useful or not it's up to you guys uh, not up to me um so but there's one theme that we haven't covered yet in the tutorials and that's the anti-traction theme now the anti-traction theme uh i have here not as a full mix but just as a stereo file for now because the session that i have loaded is an action queue 6 and 23 where all these themes that we talked about are coming back a little bit, sometimes hinting at it, sometimes full on. It's all uh, in all its different shapes. So let me just play the anti-traction theme and then we're gonna take a little bit, uh, talk a little bit about it. It's, it's relatively short. <laughs> Okay, so that's that theme. And for the real smarty pants uh, uh, among you, yes, it has a little bit of a Western vibe to it. And the reason why I did that is because this group of people um, are these crusaders, longsome crusaders, a group that has like a little bit of a Wild West uh, quality to it in my book. Uh, and um, it really made it work in the in the film to have some sort of a vibe of like you know the the western soldier just standing there with uh, with his guns like about to do uh, about to do his thing um so it has a little bit of that um now this is a, a very soft iteration of the theme of the flute against the, the strings uh, but the way that we use it primarily in the movie is in a really big action format um so now let's go to the cube and let's play um, this cue is called 6M23. Again, it's not going to give anything away what this movie is all about. Um, believe me, we're in a dramatic phase of the film. 6M23 will tell you this at least. It happens in real 6 and it's Q23. But the cues in this film were so incredibly darn long. Uh, the amount of music that I recorded for this film is close to four hours. Um, obviously, there's no, uh, no film that's four hours long, but uh, that's the amount of music that we recorded to make sure that we had all the music for the film. And I was very glad we did. Uh, so, let's now go to the queue. Uh, make sure that this is off. This needs to be back on. Okie dokie. We can now play back the queue, and then we'll just do start and stop, and we'll just like analyze what's, what's going on here. And I will put my finger up when I think I hear something that I remember. Maybe you, re <laughs> maybe you remember it uh, 
quicker than I do. Um, let's just see. Let's just play this thing and talk about it, okay? So I'm going to stop there. Did you recognize anything in here that was previously presented in the previous episode of Studio Time? And the answer is no. Good. Because this is a typical section of a film where um, we need some driving music. It doesn't necessarily need to be thematically attached uh, to anything at that specific point. And uh, you just come up with something that's uh, cool. And um, what I'm really happy with here is... Um, um, particularly like what, what the, 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 the strings are doing and especially how they played it. Um, this is not easy stuff uh, to play. Uh, so let me uh, solo this section and let's just play it. Mm -hmm. So why is this so hard to play? Because it's dum da ba da ba da ba dum and it's exactly there. Those four eighth notes are very problematic when you sit in that triple uh, triple mode. And these string players will tell you that it was tough to play that. So once you get into the dum, it's really hard to play those, those eighth notes. So we had to do um, a couple of takes here to get it right. But I was very happy that it did work out. And then there was a secondary take that we did on the brass where now um, the horns are playing uh, that riff too. Let's see if I can find it really quick. I think it's this. So also for the horns, that's um, tough to play that with that uh, intensity. We had to do a few takes, but we also got it there and they did a wonderful performance. And especially the, the guidance of Conrad Pope was very important here. As I mentioned before, he conducted the score and him and I talked a lot about how to do like certain things. And um, he, he knows so much about these... Um, all these instruments in the orchestra and he can explain to the players really well how they should be playing it and then they will he will come up sometimes with examples from uh, the classic music or from film scoring that these uh, guys potentially have uh, played on it's like well you know remember that thing you know it's like that's how you should play it with this kind of tonguing with this kind of articulation blah 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 um, it's incredible to tap into the knowledge of a guy like that okay let's move on play so we made it to here so I'm gonna play it from here Okay, let's stop here for a second. So did we recognize that? 
Good. Yes, that was the theme of Medusa that played there very loud with the choir. And then immediately it went into this kind of like light-hearted action bit where we hear the anti-traction theme that we talked about in the beginning of this episode, what that theme was. Um, so again, you're quickly shifting gears. It's like, oh, we talk about Medusa. And then bound, 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 ra, da, da, bound, bound. So you make that switch quickly when you go from one type of scene and then into the next type of scene and you blend them together. So let's just keep playing from where we stopped. And what did we hear there? For the ones that remember, this is Hester's theme. Remember? Pa -da -da, ta -da -da, on the super high strings. So I just want to pick this moment up one more time and then we continue playing from that point on. A little too late. So what happened there in that section? Primarily, this is all um, all about uh, Hester. So it's a ta da da ta da da, and then it goes to a different key. Ba da da, bum bum bum. In the horns, you hear that theme again, and then at the very end, it plays back and forth between uh, something. Uh, that is more London and then Hester, which has something to do with what happens in the in the picture. So this is primarily the action music that we use for the anti-traction, but then with her theme, just like working, working with it. So sometimes that's very important too, that themes need to be able to work together uh, in order uh, to make it fit with what the, what the picture demands of you. So that was really that section that goes in on, zooms in on Hester's music while the anti-traction action music is playing. So let's play from this point on. <laughs> Here's Medusa again. Let's stop there. What did we hear there? So for starters, we heard a couple of things from, from Hester. Um, then we heard the Medusa theme, super clear. And after that, we heard the opening line of Catherine's theme, if you can remember that, uh, just played by the woodwinds. Um, so, and then it builds up tension again, and now we're gonna play wherever we, wherever we stopped. So here we hear through the three different distinctive themes being worked into one piece of music. Master. Something new. Where did we hear that before? Correct. It's the anti traction theme again. So uh, let me just play it from the big section on. But it starts with the da 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 tension core, tension cores, da 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 in fact, the action music underneath is just constantly bubbling along and it goes to a different key and then it gets quiet and it gets loud, but the action music just continues while the themes on top constantly are changing depending on what you're seeing on screen. So let's continue now with where we stopped. <laughs> What's 
happening there. So straight after the action anti-traction theme is being played, we recognize immediately something that we've heard before, which is the Medusa theme. But the action music is still playing in that same arrangement, but now we're playing the Medusa theme right there. So uh, let me play this one more time because I, I like this section. <laughs> So what happened there at the very end? So we have the, the introduction theme and it goes to the Medusa theme and then we have those really big chords at the end. Technically, it's filler information, but it does have the full orchestration of the Medusa sound in there. So we hear the choir belching, we hear the brass and the woodwinds just really building to the speak with the strings. So the sound there is very similar to Medusa, even though the notes that are being played are not necessarily the theme 100%, it's more like filler music, but with the arrangement of Medusa, and that's why it still reminds us of Medusa, especially when you see the picture. Um, so let's continue playing from where we stopped. Oh, by the way, I'd like to point out is we're actually playing the mix session. So you're actually hearing all the live recordings and everything like that with the mixing that we discussed in all the previous episodes. <laughs> Okay, so let's stop here for a second. Um, so what happens here? So it's still like action music, it's still like crazy, but there's like little fragments of this and little fragments of that just come in and out um, because now all these characters come together, the uh, London becomes part of it, the, the, the weapon is, uh, is like uh, in, in, in full play. So this is where a lot of these things come together and you have to make choices and you, you're not gonna hit Oh, we see that person, boom, that theme. We see that person, oh, that theme. We see that person, oh, that theme. You're not gonna do it like that in an action sequence. You're gonna pick your moments where, okay, this is now a little bit more about that. Now we stay neutral action, then we go to that person, now we go to that theme. So you wanna pick your battles and the director will usually be very instrumental when it comes to what you should be picking at a certain point. He would say, or she would say, you know, you really have to do this or she or he would say, you really have to do that. So it's, uh, it's very important uh, when it comes to that. Um, I just want to play this section one more time and then we'll continue throughout the rest. <laughs>
Okay, I'm going to stop right there. So we played the section that we already we already discussed. There's a little bit of Medusa in there, and then there's um, the anti-traction, pa 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 pa, anti-traction stuff in there. Then we go to a section where it gets a little uh, quieted, and it starts like on the strings. But what's really happening there is that the harmony of Tom starts to sneak in there. And then at a certain point, we are going to a, a full reiteration. We're going to Tom's theme there. Uh, so I'm warming this, the, the cue up with like the harmony and rhythm uh, of his theme and then his melody comes in. So I want to play a little bit of that and point it out to you and then we continue uh, till the end of the cue. <laughs> So that's the end of the cue. So what was that all then? Well, there's a little bit of Tom that I just explained. Then it goes to like some chaotic string section. So what is that? It's a chaotic string section <laughs> because the picture needed it. It's not thematically related. And then we drop to one more iteration of the Medusa theme. And then after that, a little bit more craziness. And then the cue is out. So I hope this is helpful with these two um, uh, tutorials, this one and the last one where we, the last one was an underscore Q, which I keep saying is more, it's harder to write than this. This is more work um, because of all the notes and all the production and everything, but it's easier uh, to do when it comes to what's happening on the, on, the, on the picture. So this was an action sequence. The other one was an underscore sequence. But what it's all about is like, what is the music doing? And when does the music get in no man's land? And when does it get in very thematic lines where the melodies are played and you can really pick up on them. So uh, I hope this was uh, very helpful. If not, leave comments below how I can do this better in the future or what you would like to see different. Um, but thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you soon on another tutorial. So stay tuned.